Hi guys, Matt here from Rapid Development. Um, I hope you're all staying safe and well during the lockdown. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be organising some webinar opportunities um, to get involved with using the platform Zoom. Um, there'll be a whole host of things on offer, but one of the things that's going to be available is some title planning workshops. And they're available to people who've never done any title planning before and just started sea kayaking and want to learn from scratch how to go about doing it. Um, to those who have done a wee bit before but still a bit confused and need a bit more guidance and support and want to get hands-on practice in an online setting, potentially with other people as well to bounce off. Um, and maybe those who are starting to think about doing more open water crossings as well. Um, so that's available to individuals and groups. So if there's a club um, that want to get together online and do some title planning with myself, then get in touch and we can we can make that happen. Um, so this video is just a little bit of a taster of some of the stuff we're going to be discussing. And this one is about looking at open water crossings. So for those preparing for advanced leader or just for those who are planning some more adventurous trips, crossing sections of open water which are affected by tide, we're going to look at a quick video of how to do a tidal vector. So that's what this one's about. Hope you all stay safe and see you soon. Um, so this video we're going to look at how to plan an open water crossing across a section of water which is affected by tide. Um, and we're going to do that using something called a tidal vector to calculate what course, what bearing we need to paddle on. And we're going to do that with a, imagining we're going on a trip across the sand of gear. Um, so for this, we're going to need the chart for the trip that we're hoping to do. Obviously not at the moment because we're on lockdown. Um, so we need an admiralty chart, preferably for, oh, cat's yawning already. Um, for um, the trip that we're going to be going on. In addition, we, a good thing to have is something called a Portland course plotter, um, a pencil, a rubber for those inevitable mistakes that we might end up making, a pair of dividers and some tidal information and we're going to be using tidal diamonds so if it doesn't, if it's not on the chart itself we need that tidal diamond information as well. So that's the stuff that we're going to need for the tidal vector that we're going to do. So as I said, we're going to imagine that we're doing a trip um, where we're going to go paddling across the Sound of Gia from Kintyre on the Scottish mainland across the Sound to the other side. Of course, if we're doing this trip for real um, and if we're doing any open water crossing, um, of a committing nature like this, we'd need to do so much more than just work out the bearing and do a tidal vector. We would need to do heaps more planning than that. Um, for other open water crossings, for example, we might want to look at crooks points. Um, so any overfalls that happen in certain places, um, any other tidal effects. We want an accurate weather forecast. Um, we need to maybe inform the Coast Guard about what we're going to be doing. We need to be getting information about our group and making sure the group's capable of doing this trip. We need to make sure we're carrying the right kit. There's loads that we need to consider. This video, we're not going to go into all that. We're going to just think about the bearing and trying to work out the bearing that we want to be paddling on when we're going across the sound at a certain time using the tidal vector. So just the mechanics of how we do a tidal vector to work out that bearing. That's what this video is about. In terms of my start and finish point for the trip, I'm going to start at the ferry slip, just at Tain Loan on the Kintyre Peninsula on the Scottish mainland. And I'm going to aim to paddle across the sound and try and land just in this wee nook here on the island of Fank, um, just offshore from Gear. Um, distance wise that's around about two and a half miles um, that I measured and so that's about just under an hour's worth of paddling. Um, in the sound I've got some tidal movement so I need to get some information about that and really handily I've managed to get hold of a tidal diamond which is shown on the chart, uh, tidal diamond A in this case um, and that's going to be mega useful in giving me some tidal information about what's happening in the sound hour by hour. 
so I need to go and have a look at that. So I've found my information for Tidal Diamond A um, and what this gives me is hour by hour uh, in relation to high water open. Um, so the six hours before and the six hours after um, gives me the set and drift for um, the tide in the sound of gear. So the first number here is the direction in which the tide is heading in degrees um, and then the numbers after that, um, that's the rate of the tide, so the speed of the tide. First set of numbers is um, the spring rate uh, in knots and the second set of numbers is the neap rate. Um, so we're going to imagine for whatever reason um, when we're doing this crossing of two and a half miles, so just under an hour's worth of paddling, we're going to imagine that we're doing it using um, um, five hours before high water open. That's what we're going to imagine that we're doing fictitiously. Um, of course, not all days, that might not be the appropriate time to go for many, many reasons, but just so we've got an example, we're going to do it using these numbers here. Um, so uh, the direction where the tide is heading is nine degrees. And let's imagine that we're doing it on springs. Um, uh, so the rate uh, of the tide is going to be 1.2 knots. Um, so 9 degrees and 1.2 knots, that's the information that I'm going to use to plot my tidal vector. So it's time to do my vector. Um, the first step is to join up using my straight edge, so the edge of my Portland course plotter. Um, as the crow flies uh, from my start point to my finish point um, but as well as that I'm going to go beyond my finish point way beyond it um, reasons for that will become clear later so that's my first step joining those two places up but extending your line beyond the finish point um, uh, for a fair distance So now that I've drawn that line, I now need to draw my set and drift line, which is the line that takes into account the effects of the tide. Um, we get the information from the tidal diamond. We said we were going to go five hours before high water open. The set and drift was 009 degrees uh, and 1.2 knots. Um, so 009 degrees would mean the tide is going to be going up the sand of gear towards open. Um, uh, 1.2 knots is the, the rate that it's going to be going at. So first step is to get my Portland course plotter, um, get that set at 009 degrees, line up the edge of the plotter with my start point, move it round so that these squares are going to be in line with the Latin long lines on the chart, like so. Um, I then use my latitude scale um, to measure 1.2 knots because a minute of latitude is going to be equivalent to a nautical mile and a knot is a nautical mile per hour so I could just get that set at 1.2 I then get one of my needles on my start point my other needle um, just on there and then I'm going to make a wee, a wee dot just there on that other other needle and that's going to be the end of my set and drift line and then I'm going to join the two up the end of my set and drift line with my start point to create the line itself the set and drift line if we want to get technical we're going to pop three arrows on that just now so I've now got my set and drift line just here, which has three arrows on it um, that I've worked out. Uh, I've got the original line that I put on first, which connects my start and finish point and has been extended beyond. Uh, and we're getting close to the point where we find out the reason why we did that. Uh, we'll call this the ground track and we'll point two arrows on this just so we know which line it is. Um, my next step is to work out my course to steer, the the bearing that I would paddle on, uh, what we call the water track. Now the common mistake is that we would simply connect the end of my set and drift line with my finish point and take a bearing on that line and that would be the bearing that I paddle, but this wouldn't be correct. We 
um, I've done an hourly vector here um, so we're going to use the distance that we would cover if we paddled for an hour which for most people is going to be three miles um, we make the assumption that we paddle at three knots or so six kilometers an hour um, so we would cover three miles um, if we were to paddle for an hour and this is an hourly vector um, so what I need to do is to draw a th what we call a three mile line from my set and drift point at uh, the end of the set and drift line um, and wherever that intersects into my ground track um, um, that's where we connect the two points so I've got three nautical miles set on my dividers just now I measure that up just here um, I'm going to make a wee mark just on my ground track and uh, that's my connection point just there um, well, that's where it intersects. I join the end of the set of drift line to that mark that I've just made. It's the water track, um, so we're going to pop one arrow on that so we know which line it is. Um, and all I need to do now is take a bearing um, using that line, and that is my course to steer. That is the bearing that I'm going to paddle on and that's the reason why we extended this line because the intersect point of that three mile line um, is of course much further beyond um, Frank. Of course we're not actually going to paddle into the middle of gear that would be ridiculous um, but that's how we calculate the bearing that's um, that's what we're going to work out our course to steer to be. So I get this the edge of my plotter here, lined up with this water track, this three mile line. I rotate this round, get these squares in line with the lat and long lines on my chart, and then I can read off my bearing. And as we can see, the bearing is about 290. So we would paddle at 2 nine zero degrees and that's my course to steer that's the bearing that I would paddle on um, in other parts of the world there might be some magnetic variation that I need to take into account yachtsmen would also do a bit of deviation depending on uh, their vessel um, but that's the bearing that I'm going to paddle on uh, so that's my vector done so how this would work practically um, we would leave our start point here um, and it would feel like we're paddling off in this direction rather than at Fank. Um, but because the tide is pushing us up the sound, um, we're essentially doing a ferry glide. Um, and that's why we're going to use this bearing. Um, that's why we're paddling at 290, so that we land on Fank. If we left here and just paddled straight there, chances are we're going to end up off up here somewhere and miss it completely. In reality, of course, there's so much more to it than that, um, but having that 290 degrees up your sleeve as a general idea of the direction you're going to be paddling in um, is a really useful tool. We need to do other things than that when we actually do the trip. Uh, weather's obviously going to come into an effect as well. Um, the tide might not actually kick in until we get um, into the middle of the sound or maybe closer towards gear. Uh, lots of things are going to happen, so I need to, still need to be reading the water, I still need to be thinking about what I'm doing or not just aimlessly paddling at 290 um, but having that number and having worked it out using this vector um, is really really useful and that's why we've done this. Final thing that's useful for me to know is uh, how long this is going to take, uh, how long the crossing will be um, uh, and this isn't an hour's worth of paddling but I have done an hourly vector so it's going to be less than that. I could have gone about this a different way, I could have done half hourly vectors um, using the same set and drift, um, but in my experience, just speaking personally, I tend to make more mistakes if I do half hourly vectors. So I've done an hourly vector here, and I can just work out how long it's going to take with a wee bit of maths. Um, so I've got a little equation that I can use um, to help me with that. So if I take the, the ground track, that's the first line that we plotted, um, measure the distance from the start point to the finish point um, in nautical miles using the latitude scale for that. Uh, then measure the distance of the ground track from your start point to where that water track 
that three mile line intersects the ground track. Um, so let's, let's just have a look at that. It's the distance from here along this line to here. That's the first number and we divide that by the distance along this line from here to here. Um, and I worked that out to be 2.3 miles um, divided by 3.4 miles, uh, nautical miles. And then to get minutes, we're just going to times whatever this is, uh, whatever the answer to this is, by 60. And that lets me work out how long it's going to take. And having done that maths, that's 40 minutes. So it's 40 minutes worth of paddling. And our bearing, our course to steer that we're going to use, is 290, 290 degrees. So there we have it. That's our tidal vector done. We've worked out uh, the bearing that we would uh, have up our sleeve um, to try and paddle on at 290 degrees uh, if we left the ferry slip here trying to get to Fank. Um, we worked out it would take us around about 40 minutes. Um, in reality, we'd need to think a lot about a lot more than that as we as we discussed. Um, but this uh, this skill of being able to plot a vector um, is quite a useful one that you can use. Uh, uh, to, that you can practice during lockdown um, and the webinars um, can help you with that if that's if you're at the stage where you want to do a lot more practice in this and have a bit more guidance so uh, if you're interested in doing skills such as this then just get in touch my email address is um, attached to this video in the post um, so get in touch if you fancy it hope that was useful for folks and uh, stay safe and hope to see you soon